Hello and welcome to Indie Incursion, an indie games podcast, your weekly source for all the indie games news you need to know. This week we're bringing you three awesome indie games news stories, but before we get into that, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Vaughn Hyde and my illustrious co-host, the biggest of average Josh Boys. How you doing? You you like survived a hurricane? You're a freaking superhero. Yeah. I Well, I don't know about superhero. We just had a really strange hurricane. <laughs> You're my hero, baby, you know? Like, Aww, however so that song thing. goes, I, I don't know. I don't know how. My hero, baby. Something like that. Yeah. Um, Can you take yeah. away my pain? Or are you just going to leave that part I, out? I think it's Breath Away. Oh, shit. Isn't it? It's like, you can take my breath away. Or something like that, I think. Well, you have taken my breath away. I see. You do on I mean, we are talking basis. a lot, so it happens pretty frequently. That's a good point. That's a good point. So how mm, did you survive? Mm. Weird hurricanes over in Florida, oh. Alligatorville, USA? Alligatorville, yeah. Just a, a tornado of alligators. It was pretty nuts. Uh, it's like no, Sharknado, it, but alligators? But with alligators, yeah. That's the Florida <laughs> version. No, it was it was pretty... Uh, I mean, the Bahamas basically got destroyed. So the hurricane was supposed to run into us, went like five miles per hour and like just slowly crept up on it like i think it was supposed to originally hit us on saturday and then it just kept just sitting there it's like a and snail's didn't... pace like hurricane yeah <laughs> there was the like the, the the winds are category five which is the the worst hurricane winds that like you could have but it was just literally sitting on top of bahamas just like beating them up <laughs> And just like not moving at all, it was horrible. Like you, if you watch the the video of it, it's horrifying, dude. It just like their whole house. You could just see like the rooftops of the house, and there's just like water, just this giant flood, and just still a monument of rain just like falling down. It was crazy. But us on Florida, we're just like, oh no, we're gonna get hit eventually, and then it just never did anything and now it's just going like straight up to north carolina I don't, I don't know it was the weirdest hurricane i've never seen anything like it so like very happy that we didn't get hit but man it sucks for the people in bahamas yeah yeah it's absolutely terrible i'm gonna be honest uh and i've had this opinion for a while because of the hit movie pacific rim which is amazing everybody should watch it it's awesome it's got <laughs> robots big uh big kaiju cut, they, they cut them up go to space kind of it's weird um why the fuck do people live in coastal regions anymore move inland like in in pacific rim the fucking kaiju come out of the ocean and they're like hey you know what we'll build a wall boom and then they break right through the wall like okay that i why don't you just move away from like the coastal regions just get as far inland as possible. That's probably the most defensible positions. That's kind of how I feel about hurricanes as well. You can come move to Idaho. We'll hang out, dude. <laughs> I mean, if everyone had that idea, then, you know, I mean, it'd be all way too populated. Apparently, Idaho is plagued by people from California anyway, as I've said on this podcast before. We have Jeez. a lot of area that we can fill. Trust me, there's a shitload of farmland, like potato <laughs> farms right. and shit. I will not consider it, but thank That's you. That's rude, dude. There's no I hurricanes wow. here. There's no. You know, there's I'll nothing. take my, I'll take my hurricanes. Actually, I mean, technically, where I would probably go is like North Carolina. I'd, I'd like to be in Asheville, but then I'd still get hit by. Yeah, the didn't so you matter. literally just say that the hurricane yeah, is go, going, going right to Carolina? <laughs> but I mean, it, the Asheville would be more inland than where I'm at in Florida. In Florida, I'm just in. You know, there's like, there's no safety. Yeah, uh, just the the state's penis just sticking out there in the ocean. <laughs> state's penis. <laughs> That's what Florida is. <laughs> I've never heard anybody say that before. <laughs> You've never heard that, dude. We're just the long dong of the states. That, I mean, I would be proud of that if I were you. That's pretty <laughs> fantastic. I would make shirts. Uh, <laughs> they should sell those in Florida gift shops. Like Idaho, all of the gift shops and everything is just potatoes. Florida should just be dildos. And it's like the <laughs> long dong of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> That's me, baby. I would That's where I reside, I guess. That would sell like gangbusters. There's no way that those would not sell. I'm telling you right now. I mean, unless right, it's like just it. a normal family hopping through. They're like, "What the fuck?" 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't. They wouldn't appreciate their like 12 year old daughter wearing a long dong. Yeah, I was about to state say, shirt. They think it's gonna be like, it, it's like freaking Adam and Eve, but replace all the like weird silicone like fists with just penises that look like Florida. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that works. <laughs> it checks out. Gift shops would be way more interesting. I mean, I yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I also love the uh, fact that you had to cancel your flight because of this, and then it just popped over you like a rainstorm. Dude, it, yeah, <laughs> it didn't even do anything. I was so pissed. I've literally rebooked this this trip like three times because like random things have happened. I've had these horrible, like uh, just god-awful conversations with the travel agent people that I have to work with through my company where they're just charging me random hotels I don't want and I have to go just canceling flights because people are pushing back dates and now a hurricane comes, but it doesn't actually come. Like this has been the worst. Like I keep telling my boss, I'm like, you know what? I just don't, I'm not even going. I'm not going to headquarters. I don't want to, I don't want to come to the (laughs) office because it's not happening. Like I'm done. Just the world hates me. I obviously should not go outside of Florida, America's penis. That's, they need me here. Obviously, they got. I have to have somebody to hold up that long dong. You know what I mean? You got them, mm-hmm. them big average muscles. So hmm? that's. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much what I have. <laughs> so, what, is you playing any games? Doing anything fun this week while you were, I don't know, hunkered down, expecting this disaster, this natural disaster, which we don't have any of in Idaho. So feel free, you know, just hop on over here, Big Josh boy. All right, maybe I'll maybe I'll I'll, I'll think about it. Dude, we don't even have earthquakes. We've got nothing. I know. This is honestly wow. the most boring state ever. See, that's what I'm saying. Where's the, you know you well, need a little thrill in your life? Boring compared to like natural disaster wise. There's still yeah. like like wildfires. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they don't damn. do anything. Like some dude set a wildfire light in his poop on fire like two years ago. So <laughs> that was pretty wow. intense. Because apparently that's something you do. And I, no, thank you. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna move on from that. Uh, poop fires aside, I've been playing uh, two games. I, I want to talk about. So the first one uh, is man, I'm really harping on uh, loving the Epic Game Store just for their free games. I won't give them any money. <laughs> but man, I'll play all their free games they keep throwing at us. I uh, I've always wanted to jump into Inside because I've never I've never played it. I played Limbo, but I hadn't had a chance to play Inside just because I was like, oh, it was one of those games where I, I kept looking at it and I was like, I want to buy it, but it just I never picked it up. Having it free, obviously, I was like, all right, let me try it. And one one night, I basically played it all in one sitting. I like one night it was like midnight. And I just said, you know what? I want to try it out. I'll see how it goes and just play around with it. I sat there for like four, I, th- I think it was like four or five hours and just played the game straight. And from start to finish, went through the whole storyline. And man, is that a weird game. Like super creepy, makes no sense. Like, I, I don't know. It it makes sense at the end. I- I'm not going to spoil anything. And there's different theories on it. But like, it's so it's so gross. <laughs> so, pardon the pun. Could you now give me the inside scoop on what this sex doll is going to be? Uh, I mean, if it's anything like what the end of the game is, it'll just be a really nasty looking blob thing. Awesome. That's exactly yeah. what I want down toward yeah. my, you know, long dong of the United States. That's what you need. Yeah, honestly, like. I think it makes a lot of sense that they would partner with a sex toy maker based on <laughs> the creature that I saw in the game. Like, it makes a lot of sense that they would pair with that company. I, I'm definitely really in- interested to see what it's going to be. But, yeah, the game's, it's it's kind of, it's just kind of gross. It's like some some parts I was like, mm, I don't I don't like this at all. But it was, like, very interesting. And I just kept getting enthralled into like, oh, I got to see how this turns out. I got to see how this ends. Because you're just like controlling people with your mind, these like lifeless drones. And you're like this little boy just running through this factory. And you're not really too sure what's happening. And it it's all just a mystery. But it's a good time. It, it was, I just, like I said, sat down, played the whole way through, which generally doesn't happen with games. But it was definitely worth it. I mean, obviously it was worth it because it was free, but I feel like if I did pay for it, it would have been worth it. (laughs) I've also been putting off playing this game because, I don't know, just the grotesque nature of it or just 
the fact that I'm bad at video games, probably. But uh, I mean, I no, think but I'm it's not up into it. No, nah, you, you should because it's not a it's not a thing about being bad with video games. Like there's there's certain parts where it's like you have to do things in a certain way or at a certain speed, but it's more puzzly than it is like mechanically intensive. And the save system in it will take you back like two seconds before the fuck up that you had. Essentially, like every little piece is save state did. That's a weird way to put it, but um, you'll go right back to where you were before. So it's not any, like a hard like, oh, I have to redo this whole section. It's like you literally start from where you messed up at. That's nice. I played Limbo for a while until I got to the part where you like have these weird brain maggots like hop into your head. That pissed me off so much I was done. Never finished Limbo <laughs> specifically because of the brain maggots. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I didn't find anything that was like too intense that I couldn't go through. I, I don't think it would be that big of a problem. I think it was more there were parts where I would kind of look at a puzzle and I'd be like, I don't understand what they're trying to have me do, but after a while, you, you just kind of get it. So it was more puzzle-based than mechanics. Um, and then for uh, the second one, this is something that actually is going to be released early access tomorrow, and I do have something on Parallax Media that's going up on my thoughts of the game. Uh, so I got a copy of Atoma Crops, and man, is this game dope. Do you know anything about this? Uh, I saw the trailer where the guy like hops into the, uh, the the super weird trailer where the guy hops into the bomb shelter and then his yeah. like uncle or friend or whatever just gets disintegrated. But that's about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic trailer <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah. So it's essentially you're basically in this post-apocalyptic world where your uncle gave you uh, his farm as like his last last thing that he did before he died uh so you're essentially the only farmer left and this town is like hey you need to farm us up some food you know that's a weird way to say it. <laughs> you need to grow crops for the town so you're essentially trying to just be a farmer and you're you know tilling the soil you're planting seeds you're doing whatever that a normal farmer would but then all of a sudden you got all these uh, like mutant radioactive creatures which most of them are just like rabbits with guns but outside the world there's a lot of different weird ones but they basically come and attack you during the nighttime and they're you just have to defend your crops from all these people that are trying to shoot you and kill you and eat your crops all these like weird slug things and it, it essentially goes through seasons where you have three days in a season during the day you grow your crops you run around throughout the world and you hunt for basically new items and like seeds and things that are out there there's little like mini camps you kill and get perks and then you come back during night defend your crops make sure you pick all the crops and get those and then you go back to the town after the night is done and essentially it sells all the crops that you collected so that you can then go and buy perks from the shop inside town you can uh, give roses to these like strangers who eventually you can flirt with them so much by giving roses that they'll marry you and then they'll follow you and actually fight by your side and so you keep doing this each season and then the town will give you like a reward based on how full they are and how well you've done. And from there you get more perks and additional things and every season at the end of it there's like a big boss battle that you go against. It's it's actually a lot of fun, but it's right now, at least I don't know if there's going to be because there's some things that reference that it'll have some type of uh, progression system. But right now it's literally like once I've died I don't see any other solace to, oh, you know, at least I'll have this. It's more of like, oh, now I have the knowledge of playing better and understand what I need to do so that I can get farther in the game. So it is a little uh, punishing, but it's been a lot of fun and it is a chaotic mess because the fact that you have to defend your crops, but you're also trying to grow them at night just becomes this like bullet hell farming simulator mashup that I never would have thought I wanted. I love these mashup games that are coming out. Like, th Dude, this one's Bullet so Hell smart. slash, like, Farming Sim. There's your fascination with card games slash whatever. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, if you can put card game <laughs> portion into this, whew, let me tell they're you. They're like card games <laughs> slash Farming Simulator. You're like, 
I didn't know that I could dream this up, but it's fantastic. <laughs> Turns out one of our questions later on from Jason is going to pop into a, a what we'd make for an indie game, and it's it's definitely the farming simulator slash uh, card game for Big Josh Boy here. Uh, actually, the one that I have will not have any card game stuff, but regardless, That's a I lie. definitely... I know. <laughs> I definitely love this mashup genre, uh, like wave that's happening. Um, and I know this happens a bunch, but I, I feel like I'm seeing it a lot more often now in games. And I, I freaking love it because we just talked last week about how we were like, we both will never play a Stardew Valley game just because it doesn't appeal to us at all. And for me, in a lot of cases, that's because it's a farming simulator. I'm like, nah, I don't really want that at all but this is like the the one thing that makes me like super excited i'm like yeah i gotta grow my crops because i gotta feed the town because i gotta i gotta fight all these these weird like rabbits with grenades and snipers and shit like it's it's really intense and then there's this giant sun boss that starts whew, it's so good it's so cool like <laughs> i'm pretty excited because it's just in coming out in early access right now, but I really want to see where this game is going to head because they also show that they'll have additional characters and it's very random each time. So it's always like a fresh run. I'm just hoping they implement, uh, I said this in my article, but I'm hoping they implement a few things like having co-op, which would be dope just because I love co-op for a lot of these roguelike type games. And also I think it would be really good to have rotating bosses each season because you see the same boss each season, which is good because you get to like prepare and get better that way. But I also think it would spice things up, especially for people who can't get farther to see additional things. So it makes them feel like they're, you know, progressing if they're not going to give them any form of additional upgrades outside of that game. So I feel like I should clarify this point. Um, Okay. I it's not that I won't play Stardew Valley because it's uninteresting to me. It is actually Well no, that's my very point, interesting. Yes. Yeah. I just specifically have an issue with the way they swing pickaxes and swords. That's it. Yeah. It's right, I, right. I have to clarify how truly petty I am as a human being. Oh, of course. So of course. Yeah. Yeah, no, mine mine is a, it just looks boring to me. But <laughs> I, yes. I was just putting us in the same basket for the sake of the Stardew Valley argument. Yeah, I don't think you want to be included in my exceptionally petty basket, but there are two things <laughs> that I wanted to hit on that you talked about that I think are amazing. One, the idea that somehow a nuclear like blast creates mutations that rabbits just somehow have guns. There, Yeah, dude, it's <laughs> the world outside <laughs> is nuts because you have like all these normal monsters like these flies and things and like buffalo with buffalo that have giant wings so obviously it's a little different but then you just have these like very humanistic rabbits that are just running around with sniper rifles and like uh, machine guns for some reason attacking you that's awesome have you ever seen the uh the animated feature summer wars uh, no, I have not. There's a character in it named King Kazuma, I believe, and he's like a brawling rabbit. What you're explaining reminds me a lot of that. He also kind of looks mm. like a Digimon, but that's just my like one time bringing up Digimon in this podcast because I love me some Digimon. You know, actually, it might not be the how only are, time. But. Yeah, how are your uh, how's your Digimon doing? Oh, I forgot to update you guys. I fucking killed them. Literally, <gasps> like oh, a day God. or two later. I went to, oh, it was literally the next day after we recorded that podcast. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the fair. I'm going to leave my Digivice here. If I come back and these a-holes are not Digivolved, I'm going to freak out. I went to the <clears> fair. <throat> it was like three hours, came back. One of them had died, and I was like, all right, fuck you guys. I just killed the other one. <laughs> I was like, this one doesn't want to live without the other one. At least that's my justification. This thing is fucking dead, and I killed it. And now I refuse to touch that stupid ass digivice because it's the bane of my freaking existence. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing I wanted to hit on that you brought up is I love the inclusion of a romance system, but it's seemingly like the romance system included in the Fable games where the only thing that you have to do to romance somebody is give them gifts. Like, that's it? Yeah. It's not an actual, like, you know, romantic experience mm -hmm. where you have to speak to them and have mutual, like, desires and things yeah. that you enjoy. Instead, it's just like, take 25 roses. Now you are infatuated with me. Well, I mean, granted, I understand that. And yes, there is some element of, like, this doesn't make sense. But a lot of this game doesn't make sense. And I think it definitely would... 
it would negatively impact the game if such a high pat like high paced action game randomly decided to be like all right now go talk to these people and like have a realistic conversation with them because the way it works is essentially they're like uh shopkeepers almost when you flirt with them you're flirting with them by giving them a certain amount of roses to get an ability or perk that's added to your repertoire so every time you come back from a day of farming you essentially have those people it's two characters that are like sitting off to the side and each of them have a random upgrade it might be an extra health might be some random drone that follows you might be uh, additional movement speed it's just rng as to which perk they have and you get to flirt with either one of them and you could flirt with both it's just it'll take longer to actually get to that point of marrying one and then having the other character but wait there's no polygamy in this you can't marry both i mean i don't know i guess you could but i I, I was about to freak out that far this game sounds like bullshit if i can't marry several (laughs) women or men i mean i think it's only one dude and a woman but i mean i guess i don't really know because the woman like character has horns and looks kind of like a demon so maybe it's not really a woman i don't know what race they are i'm not trying to put genders to these random characters that i'm trying to marry it doesn't matter (laughs) i'm just giving roses to people if they want to marry me i'm okay with it to harken back to stardew valley once again for some random ass reason i i guess stardew valley actually has a pretty robust romance system and i've i've actually thought about playing it for that and then i remember it's so fucking dumb looking when you swing anything so not gonna happen not not gonna happen at all so you're so weird all right (laughs) well anyway that's uh that's my update (laughs) my update would be the video games i've been playing Uh, i'm playing a lot of gears of war right now just because i'm trying to kind of catch up on the story i decided to go all the way back through the gears of war franchise through xbox uh xbox one's backwards compatibility i played my xbox one more in the last weekend than i have since i bought it and wow that's pretty interesting but so i'm going back through the entire gears franchise with the exception of judgment because judgment is fucking annoying and i'm not gonna play that game uh it's stupid and i hate the whole forced horde-esque shit that happens i just want to play as baird and kill shit that's it that's all i want to do and there's like stars and shit it's annoying as hell so i'm gonna play back through <laughs> all of those i'm currently on gears two and i'm gonna hop over to three and then play through four and gears five comes out this week so i'm really excited to play that one uh, i really enjoy the gears franchise so I'm, I'm super stoked and i have also for indie games i actually hopped into no man's sky and decided to play a little bit it is a lot of fun i love nice. no man's sky if i'm being honest like it's it's so weird and interesting and every story we hear about no man's sky's community and how amazing their reddit page is i had to go in and check out the no man's sky reddit and it's possibly one of the most positive and interesting reddit like feeds i've seen in a long time it's all these just amazing landscape pictures of different like bases that they have built or like different really really cool planets that they found one had like this random ass freighter in the atmosphere that you could see and it actually looks like a star destroyer from star wars i mean it was dope i was uh, i I honestly find this game so interesting um i'm i'm probably not gonna play it an excessive amount just because it seems like it takes a lot to get into it and there's a lot of moving pieces maybe if i get some friends to hop in with uh, into it with me and maybe build a base with them i'll probably play more but right now i just kind of enjoyed like i initially made my base above ground and then i realized uh that i could i i remembered that you can actually use an additional multi-tool to dig underground so i dug underground and made this kind of like cavity and i just built my base underground like a mole it was awesome wow yeah (laughs) Yeah, i really enjoy it it's it's a lot of fun i actually think like if if you were burned by this game initially hop back in this game is so amazing i honestly can't wait for no man's sky to eventually and i feel like eventually it's gonna happen but uh i can't wait for it to be like a free playstation plus game so people are just like oh it's free i might as well hop in and Mm -hmm. i honestly think it'll be a huge hit once again like obviously there are a lot of people that really enjoy it already especially with the uh 
I believe it's like the Atlas Rising next and beyond updates, but I feel like it being free will bring in this whole new player base that was possibly burnt before, and they're going to love the game. So that's that's pretty much all I've been playing. Otherwise, watching a lot of anime, watching Log Horizon again. Yeah, yeah, I love Log Horizon. It is my favorite anime of all time. Probably going to get some heat for that, considering there are better anime out there, but it's awesome. It's, it's okay. an isekai anime. I love it. All right. Little did you know. Means, but you got it. It's basically like people being tra- like transported to other worlds. It's it's oh. kind of weird. So there's a bunch of different East Sky anime like uh, like Overworld, uh, Overworld, Overlord is one. Uh, Log Horizon, Sword Art Online, all three East Sky animes. Mm. And then there's also like this additional subsection of East Sky anime where it's actually um, like Copcraft is supposedly East Sky, which is a new like anime that's coming out right now about a fantasy world kind of coming in and converging with our world and these fantasy creatures kind of come into our world so technically they're not in another world but it's it's kind of weird it's it, mm. it's an interesting anime i i don't know if i really like it yet but yeah i'm a big like east kai boy i i watch all east kai anime with some exceptions because some of them are just weird and I'm not going to watch them. Like, No Game, No Life, I'm not going to watch that because it's like about chess or some shit and I'm not going to watch that. Just... <laughs> no no fan of chess, huh? Yeah, I'd rather just oh. rewatch Log Horizon for the 20th time. Oh, jeez. I don't know. The only thing that sounds similar for animes that I watched and I don't watch a lot is... Uh, God, I can't remember the name of it. There's something where it was like this guy... It starts with him saving some, like trying to save someone, and they both get run over by a train, and then they're in this weird like limbo where they have to fight to not to like have the chance to go back to Earth or something, and they're all what fighting the against fuck? each other. Oh, I I think I roughly know what one you're talking about. I I'm honestly not a hundred percent sure. Is it newer or older? It's older. Yeah, I wouldn't know. There are some like different weird like oh, Isekai anime that have to do with being reincarnated into new bodies. Like uh, the time I was reincarnated as a slime is one um, where he like gets fucking stabbed to death and then gets reincarnated as a slime. Another one like oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, <laughs> there's another one like uh, the the saga of Tanya the Evil where a guy and this one's actually really cool as a concept. A guy gets pushed onto the train tracks because he had just fired somebody and he's like a fucking dickhead. Like he's just a gigantic asshole and <laughs> gets reincarnated because he basically tells God to fuck off. Like he's like, oh my goodness. yeah, I'm, he, he basically says like, he's, su- he's from such a privileged position in like nowadays life. They want for nothing. So there's no, really no reason for him to believe in this God. And the God's like, fine then I'll freaking reincarnate you into a shitty life. And that's Damn. the whole anime. It's pretty cool, dude. It's pretty sweet. You should check <laughs> these out. You should watch log horizon. If you have Hulu, I'm just going to spread the gospel of log horizon on our indie games podcast. We're only so. uh, like 30 minutes in. We're, we're talking about anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should uh, move on. That's true. We should probably Talk hop into the news. Uh, I don't other sad things. Yeah. I don't know how to, to bring up this one. The our first news story is over on IGN. It is written by Joseph Noop. And it is Night in the Woods developer Alec Haloka. Did I? Do you think I'm saying that right? Is it Haloka mm. or Haloka? Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Haloka. I'm just gonna call him Alec from now on, just to make yeah, it easier. Just, uh, he died over the weekend, which is pretty intense. Uh, Alec Haloka, a designer, a programmer, and composer on Night in the Woods, has died. The announcement of Haloka's death comes from his sister. Uh, Eileen Mary Haloka. I really hope I'm saying this name at least somewhat correctly, because I feel like it's it's a hard name to say. Um, Alec, uh, she went to Twitter and said, Alec Haloka, my brother and best friend, 
passed away this morning. Uh, Eileen herself, a developer at a separate company and listed in Night in the Woods credits as a special thank you, announced Holoka's death mid-Saturday, stating that Holoka died that same morning. Uh, just to let you guys know, I'm probably going to read the majority of this article, so please go over and give them the clicks on IGN. This is written by Joseph Noop. It came out uh, earlier this week, so make sure to check this article out. It's it's a well-written article, and it's a beefy one, especially because some of the topics in there are pretty intense. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, she stated uh, that morning, Alec Holoka, my brother and best friend, passed away this morning, Eileen Holoka wrote. Uh, those who knew... Uh, those who know me will know that I believe survivors and have always done everything I can to support survivors, those suffering from mental illness and those from chronic illnesses. Uh, Alec was a victim of abuse. He was, uh, and he also spent a lifetime battling mood and personality disorders. I will not pretend that he was not also responsible for causing harm, but deep down he was a person who wanted only to offer people care and kindness. It took Took him a long while to figure out how so i feel like before i really get into a lot of the uh kind of things that she has said about this i feel like we should preface this now that i've read through that first one um to give just a little bit of context the reason that this is somewhat of a big deal is because just days before he had died he was actually accused of uh sexual assault by another mm -hmm. developer and she went into some pretty graphic detail about how he, like, uh, she stated Holoka sexually abused them, uh, or, sorry, it's, uh, another game developer who stated that Holoka sexually abused them and confined them to his home in Winnipeg, Canada. So, there's, I'm gonna be honest, I, I mean, I don't wanna say who the developer's name is. I, I, I don't wanna say her mm -hmm. name just because mm -hmm. I don't wanna, like, put her on blast or anything. I... But she went into pretty graphic detail over several different, like, tweet threads kind of a thing. Yeah. Like, she had, in a weird way, I'm going to say a manifesto, but that's, I feel like that has a negative connotation. She just had a lot of information about this. And it was actually spurned from this big news that a lot of different, uh, a bunch of, like, different women in the industry have come out to talk about how uh, the composer on Skyrim has actually done some sketchy shit as well, including possibly having raped somebody. So there's some fucked up shit happening in the games industry. Yeah. I've been thinking all this week, like once I saw this story, I was like, dude, I'm so fucking sick of shit like this happening to people. I would honestly give up all the privacy in the world. Like, I, I would give up everything. I would allow the government to see through my eyes 24-7. They can see my fucking dick. Like, I don't care. <laughs> they can, like, have video of me pooping. I don't care. I just want this stuff to stop happening. And, I, I mean, that's obviously not a solution. It's just some weird way of me saying that, like, I don't know, that, that might work. Just having zero privacy whatsoever. But it <laughs> honestly, not. yeah, <laughs> it definitely wouldn't work. But this stuff just needs to stop happening. But I wanted to yeah. preface that with uh, just kind of giving you guys a little bit of background on what it is alleged he did so that these, uh, these comments make a little bit more sense, especially how she says that he uh, was also not responsible or uh, I won't pretend that he was also not responsible for causing harm. So, I don't know if that is in any way an admission. It's right. it sounds a little <laughs> weird. Um but I, I really don't know how to deal with that, so I'm just going to go on with a couple more things. Uh, over the last few years with therapy and medication, Alec became a new person, the same person he had always been, but without any of the darkness. He was calm and happy, positive and loving, obviously. Uh, change is a slow process and it wasn't perfect, but he was working toward rehabilitation and a better life. Uh, in the last few days, he was supported by many uh, Manitoba crisis services, and I want to thank everyone for their 
their support. I want to thank Adam uh, Saltzman, I believe, for staying up late talking with us and reminding Alec that there was a future. My family has always uh, has and always will be the most important thing to me. Please give us time to heal. We we tried our best to support Alec, but in the end, he had felt he had lost too much. So. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming, so I haven't been 100% clear because nobody has actually said how he died, but I'm assuming because of some of this wording that he did commit suicide. Would you agree with me on that? Like how she says, but in the end he had felt he had lost too much? Right, yeah. I mean, it, it definitely does lend itself to the fact that it appears like he he felt like at the end of the day, this had become so much of a break into his character, both as a professional and as an individual, that he felt like there wasn't any coming back from it. Um, and in that case, would have ended up taking his life. Yeah, especially because some of the things that I, I see... That is a good point to bring up, especially because of some of the things that happened uh, within right. the days like before his death. He, uh, The Night in the Woods developers have severed ties with him, and they have mm -hmm. actually put a lot of stuff on hold because of his involvement. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it, like, it's, it's really tough. And there's a lot that's going on from, a, like, a whole statement of whether or not, like people should you know be people should be more punished i guess for outing someone which i don't agree with at all either but it's like it's a hard line between what's right and what's wrong in this because this is clearly a gray area because one you know no one knows i mean we, we obviously know who knows but we don't know and it's really easy for anyone to quickly pick sides because one you might have some you know some passion behind the person or you might know someone and it's hard to think that someone could do something like that I don't know whether or not anything actually happened or not I'm not trying to say it did or didn't but it's tough and especially in today's age we're usually quick to judge um, and whether that's judge against the victim or judge against you know the person who's uh, allegedly doing some act to that person it does damage their character because you know we have especially in the states we have our whole thought of or at least our saying of proven innocent or innocent until proven guilty but it, it especially with social media it doesn't feel that way uh at least in today's age just because the minute this kind of information comes out we're very quick to turn certain suspicions or certain opinions to oh i always knew that you know there was something like this or oh that person never could have done something like that the other one is lying and it definitely does make or break situations and unfortunately i understand from a company's perspective they obviously want to sever ties because you know the company has to think of the the bigger picture of like they have more employees they have other people and they don't want to associate their name with something that has such plague to it but it's like it sucks because you know it's essentially someone saying they don't trust them or you know one way or the other there's different ways to look at it and it's like what is the right way to go about this um there really isn't it's a lot of like very like i said very gray areas and it sucks because i mean if this is a case of mental illness like that sucks if he did something that's also really shitty but like should he kill himself i don't know and i i can't say one or the like i have to tiptoe around this because you could take this you know in a, a terrible way depending on how you look at things like it's a very very iffy situation just overall yeah yeah i i understand why you're tiptoeing around it it's definitely this is a fucked up situation situations like these are so fucked up not only because the crime is so heinous and messed up and the fact that this still happens in our civilized age is fucking outrageous um mm -hmm. but that's that's something that's so annoying about this is because they always come down to like he said she said and in this scenario she she came out and she said this and 
several days later he dies and you never really get to hear his side um right I will say some of the things his sister has said really make it seem like he actually did it. Um, like he yeah, said, she but that's says, drawing conclusions, but yeah, yeah no, I, I get what you mean. That's definitely me like reading into it. It's just kind of some weird stuff like, uh, and in cases, uh, oh, and in case not already, in case it's not already fucking obvious, Alex specifically said he wished the best for Zoe and everyone else. So don't use our grief as an excuse to harass people, go outside, take care of someone and work towards preventing these kinds of things in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I. Now that I really think about it, that that might not be any sort of admission. I'm me saying that it seems like she's saying that he actually did it is definitely me reading into it. Um, right. Sadly, we're never gonna know. In ninety percent of these scenarios, you're never gonna know what actually mm-hmm. happened. Um, I I believe there's a statistic that like eight percent of rapes or something like that are actually false like false accusals of men the the like other 92 percent are actually correct i'm not 100 percent sure on that but i i read that's, about that's it that's a nutty fucking statistic yeah i read about it specifically because of some like controversy that came out uh based on an anime called rising of the shield hero i read um but that's uh, not to get into anime again it's just <laughs> This is like, this is so fucked up and I'm so annoyed that it has to be a he said, she said thing. That's why I brought up the whole yeah. zero privacy. Cause I was like, I would love if people could hold literally every fucked up thing I did in my life. Like I, I would love for somebody to hold me accountable <laughs> for those things. So this kind of shit never happens again in our society. Mm. It's what a weird fucking world that would be. <laughs> yeah. It would be totally outrageous. It would be like a black mirror episode, but I, I don't know. I would. Like, I would believe that people would feel safer in a way, but I, it's, I don't know how to fix this. I barely know how to talk about this because it's so fucked up. And I'm not saying (laughs) that this didn't happen to her. I, I believe that it, I mean, I personally believe that it did happen to her, um, especially since uh, not especially since never mind i'm not even gonna say that i was gonna say especially since we can no longer hear his side but that has absolutely no bearing on whether it actually yeah, happened or not no, so i don't know about that yeah like yeah I, i've seen people argue one way like oh well he wouldn't have done it if he you know didn't actually do that to her but like i mean the reasoning behind why he did it is still there regardless of whether he did it or not like that's the thing that sucks is once this kind of commotion comes out like it's it's pretty hard to come back even if you didn't do it it's like it's very hard to wipe the slate clean no matter what because even if you 100 percent prove yourself innocent of something like this kind of accusation you still have people who will think that you did it regardless yeah yeah so, there's like, still people there's, who take sides no matter what yeah yeah so like i i can see that there's you know the the obvious of like oh he might just have felt like there was no coming back from it um but you know i don't i don't know yeah i don't i don't know how to feel about this i i can't say i i mean i feel like there are some people on earth that are truly terrible people and they possibly deserve to die i personally can't say whether or not like anybody I don't know. I was going to say, I, I personally don't think that I could decide whether or not somebody should die. Like, I should no, never have that not. saying. 90% of people shouldn't have that. Like, I personally, and I've joked about this before, I'm not a good person. Like, I feel like 90% of humanity are not good people. I'm very self-loathing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is this is a fucked up story. I'm, I'm sick of this kind of shit happening, and I'm glad it seems like we're moving toward a world where it's not going to anymore. But... You know, there's always going to be some a-hole that abuses his or her power for some fucked up reason. Yeah, I, I'm kind of done with this story because it's a major downer. And yeah. I mean, naturally, let's, it would be. <laughs> yeah, I know. And now let's move on to the next downer. Yeah, right? The, this week is just a whole lot of downers. I mean, this is obviously... Yeah significantly less of a downer there's no death or anything in this one uh, our next news story I is mean, written by still fucked up yeah, it's super fucked up uh our next story is written by colin campbell it is over on polygon once again i possibly might get more into this than i'm more, than i really should so please go over 
give him a click. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. This is young developers on Starbound say Chucklefish exploited their free work. We have actually talked about like the whole exploitation of free work before when we uh, talked about the like kind of controversy around Watch Dogs Legion and people creating different like songs and uh, mm -hmm, kind of like mm -hmm. creating the soundtrack in in a way for Watch Dogs, Le Watch Dogs Legion. And this is a weird it it should be included in that discussion i guess uh former developers who worked on chucklefish's 2014 indie hit starbound say they worked on the game for free sometimes logging hundreds of hours of labor some of these developers say they felt their inexperience was exploited by the company's founder finn bryce allegations of employee and i will say i'm gonna be honest this absolutely sounds like this guy did it like and it's uh, uh, this is uh, uh, mm -hmm. he talks about it later on how he says like he's not that person anymore and it definitely seems like it's like okay you you seemingly did the the weird and fucked up shit that these people are saying you did and i like how in the end it's like chucklefish is like yeah they agreed to it they mm -hmm. they said they'd work for free but let's actually get into this article now that i've given my weird two cents uh some spoilers <laughs> yeah <laughs> allegations of employee exploitation and difficult working conditions on starbound have popped up in forums before but the issue was highlighted recently by a widely shared tweet thread from the designer damon reese in which they outlined how they uh, starting at a at the age of 16 started hundreds of or worked hundreds of hours on Starbound and wasn't paid a single cent. Remember that he, I would like you to, to just remember as we read through the story, especially when we get near the end, that this person said he started to work on it when he was at, when he was 16 years old because there's some weird shit that pops up later um mm -hmm. other former workers came forward with similar stories of their own uh former worker uh Fettel star I'm going to go with Fettlestar, a.k.a. Christine <laughs> tweeted, I put in at least 100 hours of work and didn't see any sort of compensation. I was really naive and uh, too afraid to ask to be paid because anyone who did would be screamed at. I also witnessed a lot of inappropriate behavior. In a series with a uh, series of interviews with Polygon, Reese and other former developers on Starbound spoke uh, of their time working with Bryce in scathing terms and included allegations of bullying and harassment. Uh, the teenage contributions section of this article now. Uh, Reese worked on Starbound for at least two years uh, between tw tw Jesus. 2012 and 2014, <laughs> like many unpaid workers, their job title was contributor. Uh, Reese worked on the game's lore and narrative while also managing forums, often late into the night. I was a teenager uh, with no game development experience, and I was taken advantage of by Finn Bryce, Reese said. Uh, he very consciously manipulated and exploited not only myself, but also everyone on and around the team uh Bra reese recalled being asked by bryce if working for free would be a problem this felt normal and fine and exciting because i didn't value myself or my work said reese i thought that uh i thought that the experience and exposure i gained from working on the game would be enough compensation uh that is obviously not true but it's a very easy easy life for an eager teenager to swallow additionally there were already a number of unpaid contributors oh sorry a number of other contributors uh many of them teenagers like me who weren't getting paid so there is a lot of additional mm -hmm. like developers who've come out and said they had basically this exact same experience including uh later reese began to suspect exploitation especially when starbound began to attract significant income through crowdfunding and pre-orders uh when the game's beta released in december 2013 it sold over uh, over a million copies in the first month, Reese said, and yet Chucklefish management still considered it wholly acceptable to continue using unpaid workers to complete their game. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's a lot here. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of excessive. I'm going to hop over to Chucklefish's statement. Uh, 
We're aware and saddened by the current allegations against Chucklefish regarding Starbound's early development. During this time, both the core crew and community contributors were collaborating via a chat room and dedicated their uh, time for free. Community contributors were under no obligation to create content, work to deadlines, uh, yeah, work to deadlines or put in any particular number of hours. Everyone was credited or uh, remunerated. How would you say that word? Remunerated, maybe. I, I've honestly never seen that word before in my life. And it's yeah, yeah, remunerated it's, uh, money paid for work or a service. Ah, uh, there you go. As as per their agreement, it. it uh, it's been almost a decade since Starbound's development first began, and from the uh, and from then, Chucklefish has grown considerably into an indie studio that has a strong emphasis on good working practices, providing a welcome environment for all employees and freelancers. Our doors remain open to any related uh, parties who wish to discuss their concerns with us directly. Um, so, Ro Watson, unpaid for a few months with great difficulty. I really want to find this section where it talks about some weird shit. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Watson says Chucklefish was a horrible place to work. They added, being bullied by Bryce and subjected to his cruel jokes was commonplace. I personally was the subject of one where he forced me to answer a humiliating question after being forced to sleep with a team member. What the fuck? I didn't even read that part. <laughs> <laughs> Until right then. I was like, that's just so much more fucked up than I thought it would be. Um... Uh, Watson said, recall dozens of contributors who work for free. Okay. I feel like the working for free thing should definitely, like, they're burying the lead. Yeah. This dude said so he was forced to sleep with a team member. <laughs> and there's another, like, later on, after tedious tasks, it talks about how this guy supposedly fucking tried to solicit nudes from them. And we're talking yeah. about free work? There's some of them 16 fucking years old. What is happening? Yeah. I don't it, this, this is kind of where like my head was at when I was reading this is I was like is what they're doing as far as getting the free work illegal no it's fucked up that they're like coercing them to essentially be like hey work for us for free maybe there'll be something I don't know and then they just kind of ditch them yeah it's messed up like ethically it sucks but it's not illegal but then you talk about like that shit and it's like what the hell are you doing yeah, let there. alone the fact that, like, apparently Bryce also uh, it, kind of, like, supposedly outed somebody as trans by asking what bathroom yeah. they use. And then, like, laughs about it because he's like, oh. And then apparently it was like, oh, he got – someone yelled at him and he thought it was even funnier. Like, granted, these are all, like, little, you know, side-by-side -side stories, which they're all anecdotal, so – you know take it with a grain of salt but like still there's a lot of these stories kind of adding up that there's some fucked up shit going on inside chucklefish yeah yeah there's definitely some weird shit um responding to the allegations uh of inappropriate behavior bryce told polygon these allegations come from a number of years ago and do not reflect who i am now i would like to apologize if my words or actions uh have ever caused any hurt or distress as that was not my intention i pride myself on running an inclusive and progressive company and continue my uh, uh and continue my commitment to having equality and fairness as a cornerstone of Chucklefish. There was a section of this article that I'm really trying to find where he did some weird <laughs> stuff. Oh, uh, the source added, Finn would start being inappropriate in the developer IRC channel, asking everyone for pictures, steering discussions about the development into strange sexual tangents. <laughs> this is some weird fucking shit going on with Seems the development like of Starbound. <laughs> yeah. Seems like a normal thing your CEO would do. <laughs> And I, I'm definitely reading into this again. It definitely seems like he's saying he did it. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys might have just misinterpreted my solicitation of pictures and, like, me talking about possibly my dick uh, in these channels while we're developing yeah. a game about fucking aliens. Maybe he was like, hey, you know what? They've like, got tentacles. Yeah. Like, make them look like my dick. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he's like, I'll send you pictures of my dick. Like, make a tentacle person just out of my dick though 
like solely out of yeah. my penis. I want to know that that's somewhere in this game. I mean, it it might be. <laughs> you never know. Maybe this dude's penis is somewhere in freaking Starbound. I feel a little bit weird, uh, especially since like I I definitely don't <clears throat> want to discredit any of these people's work on Starbound because I love the game mm-hmm. so much. But I feel like like they they helped create an amazing game but i feel kind of uncomfortable now playing a game that apparently like people worked for hundreds of hours didn't get paid and some dude uses as an excuse to solicit fucking pics and shit and make people sleep together and all sorts of weird ass shit like i don't know i feel weird about this it's like it's hard yeah. to celebrate or celebrate it's hard to separate the the product from the <laughs> it's artist hard to celebrate too <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm absolutely not gonna celebrate this guy. Fuck this guy. I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm done with this guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. This was a weird thing to hear from Chucklefish. Yeah, right. Because um, they seem to be such a wholesome company. They're like de- yeah. helping publish all these indie games. They're creating a bunch of really awesome indie games. I believe the actual, uh, what game are you playing earlier? Atomic Crops. Mm-hmm. I believe it actually has something to do with Chucklefish. I think they might be publishing it, but I'm not mm-hmm. 100% sure. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No way. No? No way. No way. Atomicrops is from uh, Raw Fury. Yeah, Raw Fury. Why did I think for some reason that there was some sort of publishing deal with Chucklefish? I don't know. You uh, keep you keep your chuckles away from my Atomicrops. Yeah, I apparently need to. So I'm just making baseless <laughs> accusations against video games. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. It's it's a weird, a weird uh, article. I don't. <laughs> I don't know how to feel, man. Because like, if more Chucklefish games come out, which obviously they will, are you gonna be like, yep, this is what? Like, I mean, are people gonna stop playing Wargroove? I don't think so. Are people? Oh, as well as publishing Risk of Rain? No. <laughs> we have some Not Risk, Risk of, of Rain stuff coming up later on, but yeah. Not the- Risk of Rain 2, though. All right. <laughs> Whew, I can live with it. <laughs> you can live with that? You're just like, all right, cool. I, I yeah, just wanted yeah, to play yeah. Risk of Rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to feel bad about playing a game. Yeah, they're awesome. they're publishing. Uh, they're either publishing or developing. I, I really hate the distinction between publisher and developer, especially when mm-hmm. it's like you Google Chucklefish and it's like, oh, they didn't actually develop this game, but like they published it. So yeah, sure. So they get all the credit. <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying. Like uh, yeah, yeah. Time Spinner, for instance, uh, the developer yep. is Lunar Ray Games. The publisher is Chucklefish. But when you Google uh, Chucklefish Games, Time Spinner comes up, and it's like, no, nah, it's just, what. I mean, I mean, they're involved, but like they're not the developer. This is just like last of. week when we were talking about developers and shit with the Viz Media stuff, where they were like, yeah, "Oh yeah. yeah, this is the developer," and I'm like, "It's not though. It's not. It's just someone dumping money." <laughs> yeah, there's like two different companies dumping money into this. The developer is a completely different entity. But okay, yeah. I don't know how to feel about this. I don't know how I'm going to feel like purchasing Chucklefish's games, especially since I really love the games. Like, I'm really excited for Eastward, one mm-hmm. that I honestly am not 100% sure if it's actually published by uh, Chucklefish or it's, developed. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, uh, it, uh, I just had it up. It it's is published. developed by Pixpill. It is published by Chucklefish. This is what I mean. This yeah. is fucking annoying. We should celebrate yeah. developers, and then publishers should be on the fucking back burner. It's it's annoying as shit. But <laughs> speaking it of means... publishers, time to move on to our next article. Continuing to be it. on Polygon. We got a lot on Polygon today. It's pretty interesting. Mm. Uh, this is going to be the last of our big news articles. It is written by Austin uh, Goslin, maybe? Um, it is mm-hmm. Epic Game Store announces eight more exclusives launching on the Epic Game Store. Uh, we've got uh, Epic Games has announced eight more PC games launching exclusively on the Epic Game Store, including Ooblets, Watum, and for the first time on PC, the Alto Collection, which will uh, come with both Alto's Adventure and Alto's Odyssey. Some of these games are also launching on various consoles so uh the use of the term exclusive is uh it's contested 
contextual this specifically talking about pc um announced back in 2014 what Wadam, uh what is a game making friends with strange objects around you what, okay this is cool i i don't need to go through specifically the games uh there are is like Wadam, ooblets uh no straight roads the eternal cylinder that's a little weird. <laughs> uh, Super Liminal and some other awesome games. Manifold Garden, Airborne Kingdom. There's a lot of awesome games that are coming exclusively to the Epic Game Store. I just wanted to check with you. You are obviously, you said earlier, you will not give them money, but you will take their free shit. How do you <laughs> yeah, feel that's... about more and more games becoming exclusive to the Epic Game Store? Uh, I mean, I don't mind as long as I don't want to play the game. <laughs> I mean, it seems to just, like, it's it's becoming a reality that games are coming to the Epic Game Store. I mean, either, yeah, like, it's, it's inevitable. The only thing is, like, here's, like, it's kind of what we talked about before. I want them to revamp their system to have more things like more cloud save, more achievements, actual in-store reviews, like, those type of pieces that are features to the actual platform rather than the exclusivity itself before I feel like, yeah, this is where I want to make a jump or I want to, you know, have this to have a library of like half of my games because it's not like, there's some people who they look at the Epic game store and they're like, Oh, because I don't trust that company because there's weird allegations of them stealing information or something like that. I don't, I don't know the full story. I don't, apparently I, I there's some weird deep. fucking allegations that have deep, been debunked like four times yeah. about 10 cent somehow stealing users information yeah so there's there's like that whole thing i don't really care too much about that i just care more about like well for one i'm more of preserving my games in one location and i enjoy having my steam library which has a ton of my games and it's all there and nice for me which is you know it's like it's basically like a virtual bookshelf that i have and i have all my games lined up nicely and they're all set in their row and then this new bookshelf gets built right in my own house and i'm like what the hell are you doing it and they're like the bookshelf is like hey i'll put a couple of books on here for you and you could you know read them if you want and i'm like yeah but you're not as nice as the bookshelf i have over here like you know mine has all these like nice bookshelf stoppers and it's got nice uh you know fucking done wood or whatever i don't know i'm not a carpenter i don't know this shit but like you know what <laughs> i'm saying like bookends <laughs> it's got bookends and fucking i was like i'm like what features do books have you're like this analogy is going shit. way deeper than i thought it would <laughs> uh, yeah i mean it's a good analogy though i think in it's some, pretty decent. some sense yeah it's a good way it's a good one Anyway, so, like, I want my nice bookshelf. And granted, I know there's reasons for it. I know that it's a good thing and that it shouldn't be a monopoly. And I'm accepting the fact that, obviously, there's reasons from an independent developer side that are great to have the Epic Game Store or any other store in general. But I just, one, I don't like the exclusivity thing just in general because I want to play it anywhere. I don't think that it should be limited, especially because consoles makes kind of sense because it's a specific hardware but like with computer it's made to do whatever you want so i I think it's kind of weird but i get it i just one i don't really care about many of the games that are coming out but there are games that i look at and i'm like i don't want to start building a library on here yet i don't want to have like lack the features that i could have on steam like grifflands and uh i believe outer worlds is going to be an exclusive or like I, I think like a limited release on PC and it's one of those things where like now I'm considering like oh maybe I'll just get Outer Worlds for Steam because or Steam <laughs> duh for uh the Switch because like I don't really want to play the it Switch there. of all consoles you have a PlayStation 4 Josh and you're going to buy the Outer Worlds on freaking Switch <laughs> I I I uh I like portability and convenience more than i appreciate <laughs> graphical fidelity <laughs> that's all right cool i'm not judging you i guess well i am but i'm not i guess yeah, you clearly are <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i mean it's good for the epic game store it's what they need to do i just i want more of the other back-end features as opposed to exclusive games 
That's true. I mean, there is kind of the, the, the an argument for two fronts when you bring up, like, one, Steam did not initially have all those features. They grew, and they used yeah, the money yeah, that they true. got from people purchasing games on their platform to grow. So it's very possible that for the Epic Game Store to grow, it will actually... It, I mean, they don't need I mean, that Epic's money. Epic's got enough money. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> Epic's got money. I also... I have to say, I really despise the whole Epic has a lot of money because they have like Fortnite thing where people use that against them versus Steam being more noble because oh it's like oh it's, it's Steam's made by Valve and they don't have a lot of money it's like dude fucking Half-Life Tower of <laughs> yeah these these massive games that have come out and they made a shitload of money people are acting like Epic's these fucking assholes cuz they have a bunch of money and Valve had probably i mean definitely not as many stacks as epic has but i mean they have a lot of money they have some some nutty revenue from (laughs) yeah from these like yeah epic has a lot more money but acting like valve didn't have money when they created steam is is a little bit just like shaping the facts to meet somebody else's conclusion like they're just trying to make an argument and shaping the facts around them and it's kind of annoying and also If exclusivity, and this is kind of just a question I'm posing to you and fans of Steam, uh, but not necessarily like exclusive fans, you just kind of like don't enjoy the lack of features. If games continue to be exclusive on the Epic Game Store, but they slowly gain these features, will you move to the Epic Game Store? Or does the separate like lineup, your separate bookshelf, uh, is that still something that you're going to be annoyed by? It's definitely something I'm going to be annoyed by. This is definitely, like, this is one of my irrational things. Just like you have your pickaxe thing, this is mine. I'm very much old man, like, rationaling right now of, like, why do, why should I change? I have all my games here. I don't want to move to a different house, basically. Like, it. I don't, I like where I have my games. I like how it's set right now, and I don't want it to change, you know? All right. And is that wrong? Probably, but, you know, that's that's how I feel. I mean, I personally uh, will probably end up like migrating to the Epic Game Store just specifically because I like the larger revenue shares for developers. Either mm-hmm. the Epic Game mm-hmm. Store or I can't remember the name of it, but, but supposedly there's like a rising additional like storefront that's coming out that gives an even larger share to developers. So. I might check that one out. I I heard about it on I believe kind of funny games daily last week or so. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's something weird. I'll have to check it out before I. Uh, this is just a whole fucking episode of me giving basis accusations against things. So. <laughs> just be prepared. <laughs> just just fucking dumpster all over the place. Like, <laughs> let me just let me just give you this fucking garbage. Just gonna cover everyone. everybody in shit. Uh, so <laughs> we've had a whole lot of news today but i think it's time to cram just a whole lot more news down your throat how about you big josh boy are you ready to get crammed cram 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 wow that was really enthusiastic Thank you. <laughs> my wife's in the other room she's probably i don't think she's ever heard that part she's probably like what the fuck is happening all right i think this is the first time your wife has ever like seemingly been home while you recorded the podcast because yeah, i always hear at the end of it her like opening the door <laughs> yeah i know right at the end you hear that loud like <laughs> i don't know why my mic picks up like like my mic for me is like relatively low for some reason if i'm not like right next to it but the random noises in my house will just be like oh the mic is like that's what i gotta pick up right now and i get like the loudest noise ever <laughs> obviously the mic needs ambient noise they're like mm. it's uh, it's all about ambiance dude that's how podcasts work you know ah uh, of course really everyone puts loves you background inside my noise. living room <laughs> So, Newscram is our weekly wrap-up segment where we, the hosts of Indie Incursion and Indie Games Podcast, cram you full of all sorts of indie games news stories. This week, we are going to cram you real quickly with, uh, I believe, five different indie game news stories, and then we're going to hop in to some new stuff. Uh, First of the indie games news stories... For all those gamers out there waiting for the console port of Hapu Games' latest roguelite, uh, Risk of Rain 2, you'll be happy to know that by the time of this airing, you can pick up a copy on your favorite platform, whether it be Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, or the PlayStation 4. Uh, Play everywhere. Uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> the Switch. Uh, play everywhere the developers responsible for the console port will also be handling all content updates on the consoles, including but not limited to the Scorched Acres update, as well as all additional content featured in the console's content forecast, uh, which yep. promises four more subsequent updates, including new survivors, bosses, and more. The first of which is expected sometime this September. Also, as an added bonus for all those physical media fans out there like moi uh per several <laughs> amazon listings there will be physical editions uh for all consoles coming this november 15th ranging from uh 29.99 to 39.99 each of these including a digital copy of the original risk of rain as well well that's pretty cool it is very cool. Very cool. I'm very excited for it. Uh, I have some news for all those self-hating ukulele fans out there. I don't know why I had to write that, but I just needed to. Not only will you be able to pick up its 2D sequel, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair on the Nintendo Switch this October 8th, but you'll also be treated to more than 60 different tonics. Sadly, uh, several of these tonics will be exclusive at launch for those who pre-order the game digitally. Pre-purchasers of the physical copies, uh, though may not receive these digital goodies yet anyone who misses out will be able to purchase these tonics at a later date uh our next news story is anyone who loves plague night like myself this is just a whole bunch of news that i like just let you guys know <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan. Uh, anyone who loves Plague Knight, as I myself do, I uh, will be rightfully stoked to hear that Mona, the alchemist from the Plague of Shadows expansion, will be a playable character in Yacht Club Games' new brawler, Shadow, uh, Shovel, Shadow? Shovel Knight Showdown. <laughs> uh, Jesus. That's okay. We'll get there. I'm so bad at reading. <laughs> it's so That's depressing. Right. I believe in you. We keep doing this every day so you get better and better. That's true. That's true. Eventually, you'll be a news reporter. I hope. I mean, like, I don't know. On like Channel 10 News. Talking about indie reason. games? They're just like, yeah, for some reason. Who the like, fuck hey, in Idaho cares? <laughs> <laughs> get this random guy off the street. <laughs> You're like, he doesn't even work here. I just like run on the set like a weatherman. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking news! <laughs> got fucking Decay of Logos is delayed on the Switch. Speaking of, haha, <laughs> just uh, oh. bring it up. Uh, those looking forward to Decay of Logos on the Nintendo Switch have probably noticed that the game has yet to appear for sale on the Nintendo Switch eShop, and that's because developers Amplify Creations have delayed uh, the Switch version of the game from August 29th to an undisclosed date in September to be given, quote, the necessary time needed to ensure players can experience the game in uh, in its best form from day one. Yet Xbox One, PC, mm -hmm. and PlayStation 4 versions will release according to schedule. And last but certainly not least, uh, for our news to wrap up our news cram segment, uh, at least the news stories that is, is some great deals. Uh, this week, as of airing, you can get both Grueling Platformer, The End is Nigh, and Serene Adventure Game Abzu both completely free via the Epic Game Store. So yeah, you can get some more free indie games. No big deal. I was actually going to... Hell yeah. Yeah, I was going to talk about how uh, Celeste and... I forget what the other one is. There's Inside. Yeah, Celeste and Inside were free. I, I like how you literally talked about it. Like earlier, how you got it free and I forgot about it. Yeah, Celeste That's and Inside okay. were free, but literally by like I think the day that this goes out to people, they will no longer be free, and it will instead be the <laughs> end is nine Abzu. So, got him. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> time for some new stuff. Our first item in new stuff is a long-awaited one. Untitled Goose Game by developer House House has finally oh, been yeah. revealed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch, Macs, and Windows PC this September 20th and will cost $19.99 with a limited uh, time launch sale price of $14.99. It's time to honk. <laughs> I fucking love that logo. Like It's so good. I, I want a shirt with that. Uh, sadly, those hoping to buy it on Mac or Windows PC will have to pick it up on the dreaded Epic Game Store. Ha, fuck you, Josh. The dreaded. Pick it up on the freaking Epic Game Store. <laughs> well, time to get it on the Switch. I know, right? I was like, you're just going to buy it on the Switch. Yeah, that's where I go. <laughs> uh, Turn-based tactic game Overland is officially coming to a slew of different platforms, including Linux, Mac, and Windows PC, as well as all current consoles this September 19th. 
From the creators of famed Baba Is You comes a new roguelike pixel platformer, Nuita, maybe? Noita? It's N-O-I-T-A. <laughs> So you guys just pronounce that however you want or however the developers say, I guess. Uh, will, <laughs> which will release on Steam this September 24th. Hey, you won't have to buy that one on the Epic Game Store. No big deal. That one's pretty cool. I'm uh, pretty psyched. I mean, I'm not going to get it, but I'm pretty psyched. <laughs> I want to be honest, as a joke in this next one that's a callback to my review of the game on Parallax Media, so feel free to just go back and read the like entire paragraph of a dick joke I made, just to let you guys it's know. It's still there. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, the remarkably phallus-centric 3D platformer Candleman will hit the shelves of the Nintendo um... Switch eShop on October 3rd. Um, a lot of games, maybe, has officially announced that both 2D action RPG Niflheim and Hand Drawn Puzzle, uh, Hand Drawn Puzzler, the Tiny Bang Story, will be coming to the Nintendo Switch on September 20th and October 4th, respectively. Uh, confirmed in a blog post, the behemoth, uh, the behemoth fabled Castle Crashes Remastered will finally come to the Nintendo Switch uh, on September Dope. 17th. It has a whole bunch of news for you here too. Like, I'm saying it's all for me. You freaking like this shit, too, Josh. I love Jeez. Crashers. But also, why is it needed now? But regardless, bring everything to Switch. I mean, it's it's been, like, sequestered to the uh, 360 and PC, I believe. Is it only two consoles that it's on? I, I think you can actually uh, play it on the Xbox One as well. Probably. I originally played it on the 360. It's also on PC. Yeah, that's what I said. You freaking dork. Oh, you I PC thought you said dork? PS4. I don't know why. Excuse no, me. I think I said PC. I might have said PS4, but it's not there. Don't look mm. for it there. It's not there. It's sadly. It's not? Really? Oh, weird. Uh, no, know. it's just now coming to the Nintendo Switch, big boy. Take that, PlayStation boy. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'll just go. Not do anything. Uh, announced by Nis America, both uh, punishing platformers, Lou Mulana or La Mulana and La Mulana 2 will be coming to the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 sometime in early 2020. Multiplayer mech brawler Override Mech City Brawl is officially making its way to the Nintendo Switch sometime later this year. Confirmed by publisher Tiny Build, Speedrunners, the multiplayer platformer, is heading to the Nintendo Switch. Sadly, there's no word on a release window window or price and last but not least for today's new stuff if you're a fan of publisher devolver digital you'll be excited to know you can pick up uh, their most recent collaboration heave ho on and what and nintendo switch right now on the nintendo switch right now is what i meant to put because mm, apparently yeah i i and they happen i always freaking get people for typos and i put a typo in my own damn thing that's, That's super okay. fun. You didn't publish it, so no one knows. That's Except true. All the I only had to read it. Maybe I'll just edit that part out. Oh, perfect. Good, <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> it's totally worth the like 40 minutes it's going to take me to try to find it. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, we've been blessed with so many amazing indie game news stories today that I think it's about time we give back in to the creators in our next segment. God bless the crowd. This is where the biggest of average Josh Boys hops into all sorts of different crowdfunding sites to find some awesome indie games to talk about. Today, we've got two indie games on the God bless the crowd docket. That's true. Uh, we've got Homeworld 3. Homeworld 3 is the true sequel to the legendary spacefaring RTS and Mind Seas, a story-driven action adventure game. Uh, transfer your mind to a robot and rescue your beloved one. I'm t- it's your daughter, just to let you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird know that it put it that, it that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's more the context that you read it in. Shit it. I feel it. like the tone should be a little different. <laughs> I also, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. Right as I went to read the actual, like, line, you clicked on the doc and the little, like, thing popped up to let me know Anonymous was, like, doing it. I was like, I can't fucking see it. <laughs> 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 it literally happened right as I went to go read it. Oh, that's perfect time. I'm <laughs> glad to always hinder you and your reading abilities. <laughs> I mean, you don't really have to. I'm just, p- just bad at reading altogether. That's so, true. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's talk about Homeworld 3. They, I mean, d- does Fig classify how much that they were so they were asking for? <laughs> okay, let's, first off. Their goal is a fucking Homeworld? dollar. Yeah. Do you know anything about Homeworld? Not even a little bit. The trailer was really cool, but it did not tell you anything about this freaking game, dude. Literally nothing. I don't nothing. know anything about it either. It's an old game, <laughs> like from back in the day, Homeworld, I guess one and two, and now they're just trying to beef up 
this new expansion after like they said like 16 years holy and shit yeah yeah the interesting thing is their goal which i have not seen from something like fig is one dollar so they clearly made it <laughs> yeah i like how 100 percent to their goal they <laughs> you have to wonder if that was an accident or on purpose seriously i don't know <laughs> I, d I don't think they really care i also don't think they really need it because i'm a little like we went through this whole thing last week about like oh should an independent developer try to like market their game to fig and i was like well yes but it's pretty hard to get through fig is partnering with gearbox yeah that is a little weird why is gearbox using this like i, I don't know i don't know maybe I they mean, don't like, want to pull all the negative attention from like randy pitchford's weird ass usb drives anymore they're just like hey we're gonna combine with fig just don't know that we have anything to do with homeworld even though it says gearbox publishing right there it seems so strange like and i guess like it it makes sense like they need money too like especially if you're building this giant expansive world and trying to take on this immaculate project but like at the same time it's just you know you're an actual like studio that's already well endowed for this kind of thing and there's other people who are trying to you know push their initiative but granted, that's true I mean, you could say the same thing about double fine and psychonauts too though because they could. also used fig you definitely could so yeah well i also kind of feel like that's weird but double fine has always had some kind of like they've always tiptoed around uh strange business practices um so i don't see them like I, I wouldn't put it past them that they were just like oh yeah we're gonna use this anyway regardless they went to microsoft so it doesn't matter now which also brings weird things into the whole fig scenario but this is i mean i put this because generally there's not a lot that comes through fig so i usually talk about ones that come like pop up this one i mean I, i'm gonna be honest i have really no interest in i'm generally not an rts person and space as far as like the whole ship thing which i guess what they're trying to do with this is it's more of like an expansive universe that you get to see and like interact in but it just like i don't know the whole space thing doesn't really do it for me really i absolutely adore space i know yeah i know but it's just it's not my thing i'm uh what does in interest me about this one is it's definitely different from what Fig has been doing in the last, like the past two ones. The past two ones, they've been doing that weird open early beta access phase where they're like, hey, we've got a game that's an alpha and you can buy into it and play it and help us do stuff. And it doesn't matter what goal like we're trying to hit. Like we're going to just take your money and give you alpha access. But this one went back to their normal routine of actually asking for money. But it seems like they kind of did the same thing since they only put a dollar goal. So, like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the more I see about this game, the less I actually enjoy this freaking fit campaign, if I'm being honest. Mainly because I thought, I was like, hey, this has got a real good trailer. This trailer has got me stoked. I'm excited to hear more about this game. Uh, it literally tells you nothing about the game just yeah. just nothing probably one of the worst trailers i've ever seen considering that it tells you nothing about the game including the fact that i had no fucking idea it was an rts and no idea it's not even a little bit not classified in the trailer at all mm -hmm. and i'm i'm assuming they're like hey it's the third instance in the franchise like you probably know like what homeworld one and two are by now if right. you're at least looking at this not me not me at all like, I know I have no I have no idea really what <laughs> this is all about and granted there's clearly people who are like into this because they already have five hundred and fifty five thousand dollars um I I really like fig because you look at the breakdown and it's generally pretty half and half so fig funds meaning people who have invested have invested two hundred and seventy three thousand dollars and those who have actually just pledged to buy the game have been $282,000. I don't know. It's just a little neat thing that I like to look at as far as who's like out of their funds. Because sometimes you'll see it where there's more investors than backers. And you're like, hmm, is that a bad thing? Like, <laughs> like I don't know. Because people aren't actually just buying it. But then again, maybe it's just a lack of visibility. I don't know. Also, speaking about buying, this game is $50 fucking dollars. Let's, yeah, it's let's not talk a, about not that excessive price. 
Not a cheap entry point. <laughs> I mean, I think they're clearly just like going for because the thing is that you're getting early access to it and shaping the game kind of a thing. So I think they're just alluding to, hey, we're not going to give you a discount to the game. It'll probably be like $50 when it comes out, but you'll have it, you know, like right away and be able to help shape the world. That is really cool. I I brought this up in one of our last few God Bless the Crowds uh, where we talked about another game on Fig and how much I really enjoyed the fact that they, like, including you in the creation of the world, not literally because I fucking hate that. I've said it several mm-hmm. times. But allowing you to kind of create the lore by doing things in the video game, I think that's really cool. And if more games are doing that, I think it's really special. It's really cool. More games need to do it because it's awesome. And that's exactly what I want out of a game uh, is to actually be included in the world in a meaningful way. But yeah, I don't know. This seems kind of like uh, I this is going to sound inherently negative and it's because it, just the it wording. Is. No, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I just I hate the like how prey is now kind of in in some ways like an inherently negative term because i was going to say that they're preying on these people's nostalgia i'm assuming for the homeworld franchise uh Mm. especially since like i mean you could just say they're playing into it yeah they're yeah but i also need to use the word prey more because i really hate the fact that like predatory is is a really fucked up thing but when you actually like learn the definition of predatory it's not that fucked up like literally everything is predatory for the most part because it takes advantage of you in one way or another so i don't know that's just me being weird and semantical yeah. uh it's, yeah, it seems like a weird <laughs> battle to have right now during this discussion it's absolutely weird to go into but it's kind of on brand for me yeah 50 bucks is excessive there's a lot of like interesting stuff you can get i like the uh, homeland 3 collector's edition that's mm. really really cool i'm a big physical goodies fan as everybody knows um yeah i feel like this is it's a really good campaign it just i i think the only thing that it really could have done better is that trailer um just really giving you any sort of context to what this game is or the fact that you know it's an rts would have been really cool but i mean this game is obviously meant for people who enjoyed the previous two installments so it's it doesn't seem to be meant for me and that's totally fine a game that is absolutely meant for me though is Mind Seize over on Kickstarter. We've got a story-driven action-adventure game. Transfer your uh, mind into a robot and save your be uh, your beloved one. I'm just going to say as, like, as close to nothing as possible so it doesn't sound like it's in any way romantic because it's your daughter. Your daughter. Yeah. Save your daughter. <laughs> uh, these developers are looking for nineteen thousand uh, dollars. They currently have eight thousand one hundred thirty-nine dollars, with twenty-two days left to go and three hundred and eleven backers. Uh, they have a reasonable fifteen dollars for the game. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed that. That's fantastic. Uh, this game looks really, really cool. I love its pixel art. I love the concept of just freaking robots, dude. I love me some robots. Interesting enough, literally everything we talked about in this is going to come up later when we answer Jason's question. My love of robots is absolutely going to come up. Just be prepared. Um this game looks really cool i'm interested to see how difficult it really is because it seems and i hate to say this it seems somewhat of like a souls like esque indie game like 2d action uh like 2d arpg similar to like blasphemous because it's there seems to be a hardcore difficulty curve in this game and i'm into it Hmm. it looks cool interesting i don't know i don't i mean yeah I guess I don't see it as that much. I, I wouldn't. It's because you're good at video games. Uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize this as a Souls like, but it does feel very Mega Man ish. Yeah, that's and a good point. I shouldn't actually say that it's like a Souls like. I should just say that it looks difficult. It just. Yeah. It looks like it'll comparison. be a little bit harder. Yeah, I also really hate that. And I, once again, self loathing. I hate that I just said that, but. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. No, nah, I mean, it's it's easy to do. But, yeah, it, it does look really cool, though. I definitely – I like the inclusion of the guy being handicapped but using, like, his mind to power a robot. I don't know why. I just think it's kind of neat. I honestly thought he was that. in the suit for a while. 
I was like, yeah, no, from so the trailer, I, I was, was like, like, he's definitely in the suit. And now I'm realizing that it's like a freaking, like an avatar thing where instead yeah. of like the Navi, he's a freaking robot. <laughs> yeah. So like, I kind of thought the same thing too. When I first watched the trailer, I was like, oh, there's a guy in a wheelchair. I wonder who the robot guy is though. <laughs> I, like, I figured it was piece. just like an Iron Man suit, like how War Machine like can barely walk, but he freaking wears the suit. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, no, it seems more, and I, I would assume that's why it's mind sees of transfer your mind to a robot and <laughs> rescue your beloved one. But. Well, it's actually because you're supposed to be, like, reclaiming the, like, the minds that are stolen from people for some mysterious reason. Like, that's, mm. that is actually the story of this game. Uh, Mind Seeds is a story-driven game that takes place in a distant future where transferring human consciousness to a mechanical brains and robots is possible. Uh, that's not the part that I actually care about. I'm looking for a uh, paralyzed protagonist of this story aims to save his daughter whose mind was stolen by an organization called the ascended. Uh, so yeah, they're like apparently just stealing like people's mind for mm. s- people's minds for some reason, which is really, really interesting. So it seems like that's actually what you're trying to save your daughter from. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to see how he gets paralyzed. That sounds a little fucked up, but I'm wondering if it's going to be like a RoboCop scenario because he is a private detective. Like, he is a private investigator. So it seems like this game may or may not be absolutely ripping off Avatar and RoboCop, but I don't give a shit. This is cool, dude. I don't know. Like, I'm in. I definitely... I really like some of the things in here that they're adding as far as elements. Like, um, there's, there's a GIF if you scroll down lower where you're literally fighting a guy he's shooting at you and your character shoots his gun at a light above and the robot loses you and then you can melee attack him what oh okay i see that that's cool so like they have line of sight that they're playing into which is really neat yeah, that is really interesting. I like a lot of the combat. I like the, uh, I'm a really big fan of not only like space and like technology, robots included, but also uh, like samurai esque movements. And it seems like this includes those, how he has like multiple swords, like katana esque mm-hmm. swords. Ugh, yeah. This game is really, really cool. I actually yeah, really like it. Good. I hope that it receives the money not only to fund it, but to get this digital Switch version at 2700 as a stretch goal, because I really want to play this on the Nintendo Switch, let alone the $4,200 edition that is a physical Switch version. That would be dope. <laughs> I'd be into that. Yeah, I mean, it. that sounds pretty cool. I don't care about the physical part, but yeah, digitally, I think that's a good one. Why are you hate me, dude? Why? Why do I, I don't know. I just, I, anytime you enjoy something, I have to, you know, shut it down. I also have to say, why, dude, okay, I understand that it's probably some sort of motif in this game, but why is literally every person other than your protagonist a fucking bounty hunter? Like, every single one of them is mm. a bounty hunter and captain, bounty hunter, gunman, bounty hunter, pilot, bounty hunter, doctor, bounty hunter, mechanic. I'm assuming they're all on the same team, but still, yeah. just say they're it's just a fucking a, mechanic. You don't have to say it's a bounty, bounty hunters. hunters. <laughs> it's just a big group of bounty hunters, you know? They just really want you to know. I don't know, though. Like, it's freaking weird. Like, it's, it's really repetitive <laughs> and odd. Like, I didn't need to know that they're all bounty hunters. Like... I don't know. It's just, maybe, it bothers maybe it me plays for some into reason. Story. Maybe they really have to be bounty hunters. And you'll find out why when you give them $15 for a digital version of the game. Yeah, this sounds like some Cowboy Bebop shit. It definitely seems like this <laughs> game is like an amalgam of a bunch of different stories. Which I, once again, as I've said before, wholeheartedly uh, like subscribe to the idea that there are no new ideas anymore so i'm not i have no issue with this game seemingly like paying homage to all of these different franchises and ips but uh yeah it definitely seems like an amalgamation of freaking mega man mega man uh avatar robocop cowboy bebop there's a lot of shit in this game and i'm into it i like it $15, $15, folks. Pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, do it. So then I cannot back it and get it when it gets a physical copy. <laughs> you like, motherfucker. Later on. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can fund my dreams, so I only have to spend $25 or $30 on a physical version of this game. <laughs> what a fool. <laughs> I told you I'm not a good person, Josh. Everybody thinks <sighs> I might be joking about this. I'm really not. 
I suppose that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's that. <laughs> Time to hop in to our random questions of today as we simmer down this podcast. We started off on a bad note and we're ending on a good note, everybody. This one's going to run Ooh, yeah. a little bit long. Normally, we get it around an hour and a half. It's going to be a little bit extra it's gonna be like an hour 45 we got two questions today one from a friend of mine chase he wants to know let's hear your guys is mount rushmore of indie games so let's hop onto that one first what okay. would be your mount rushmore of indie games now the biggest of average josh boys <laughs> really thought about this for a while before we started recording i went yeah i rambled for quite some time about if fuck you chase about that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, no, I, I went back and forth cause I was, cause this question has been asked in a couple of places. Specifically, we talked about game scoop where they did it and they like took an approach of what the monuments meant, like what the monument means as far as each one of the presidents and what they represent. So I had to look it up. And first off the website that I looked at is wrong because it showed development twice, which really threw me for a loop. I told you I they just confused. really care about development. You got to yes. feature it twice. <laughs> so apparently it's uh, birth preservation growth and development so i picked both a winner and a runner-up for each of the categories oh you went really in-depth dude i'm just gonna freaking shoot from the hip yeah no because i was like at first i was and i noticed i was like oh i know what to do and i just listed a bunch of games i liked and i was like this isn't gonna work there's too many of them (laughs) (laughs) so i was like i was like fuck it i have to i have to put some thought into this so okay so for birth I have, as the runner-up, I picked Binding of Isaac, and that was because of the obvious birth reference, because he is, you know, like a fetus. Not a fetus, but a little boy. Yeah, I love the second that you realized it was birth. I was like, you're going to choose Binding of Isaac, aren't you? And you're like, yes. (laughs) Yes. But I ended up uh, not going with it, because I started thinking about, like, real, like, the birth of games. And so what I picked was Alien Hominid. And I picked Alien Hominid because that is an indie game back from 2004. And that was originally in the Newgrounds, like, Flash era. And it came out as, like, kind of the start of what I feel was, you know, that that momentum of building games from, like, just the ground up, having that community and building it, and then spawning it into an actual video game that was, uh, you know, the concept of indie as far, far as the behemoth goes. Um, So I chose that for birth. For preservation, my runner-up was Shovel Knight. And that was because of preserving the old nostalgia of old school games that it tries to replicate. But I essentially panned back to having the winner. Did you say that one was the runner-up? The runner-up, Ah, you dumb. I'm done with this podcast. I'm going to go home. I'm already at my home. I ultimately went with Cuphead. You suck. Of, I hate because you. <laughs> of, <laughs> because of what it does for old school classic <laughs> art and how it preserves that into an amazing video game. I guess it makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> for growth. Uh, for growth, I have as runner up Super Meat Boy. I don't really know why. I just really like it and wanted to put it, but it doesn't make as much sense He's as the growth. winner. Because growth, yeah, he's no, a big he growth. he is one, of, yeah, he's a growth of Yeah, meat. he's a big meat growth. Uh, but for uh, actual winner, I put No Man's Sky. Ooh. And the reason why I did that was because of the growth of that video game starting from basically nothing because they had lied and then had built out such a elaborate community and what has it has essentially become today. I enjoy the inclusion of No Man's Sky. Approved. I should say. Approved. Yeah. All right. right. Thank you. Thank you. And then for the (laughs) last one, my runner up is for development. Um, I guess I should have been saying the president's name, but it doesn't matter. It's Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, Roosevelt. It's all in that respective order. You can listen to timestamps, whatever. Uh, Nobody gives a shit. They're dead anyway. It's cool. They're whoa. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Anyways, so for development, the runner up is Celeste. Ooh. And the reason is because of the obvious development of character inside the game and the emotional, uh, you know, difficulties that you have to deal with as a character and developing as a person. Um, but ultimately, I land on something that's a little more, uh, I would say, historic in not really historic, but has more 
of a popular side just because Celeste is pretty new. Um, and development went to Minecraft. And that's generally because Minecraft is really a developing game as far as both in the indie side of becoming from indie to a full-fledged studio, but also because you're literally developing, like, I don't know, construction. <laughs> like, you're, yeah, you're developing a developing world. you're developing your own world. Yeah. yeah. So both, uh, you know, both reasons go into it. So that's my list. So it essentially goes Alien Hominid, the Alien, the Cuphead face, the No Man's Sky astronaut face, and then the Minecraft. You could say Steve, but I'd rather go with a, uh, what the fuck do they call him? The uh, a Creeper. The Creepers, yeah. Just because the Creeper looks cool. Minecraft Steve, guy sucks. And I also feel like the, the Creepers are much more like noticeable than Steve mm. is. Like Steve just looks yeah. like a goober, but a Creeper looks a synonymous with, yeah, Minecraft. Either that or the pig, because exactly. for some reason the pig was a real thing. Like people really like yeah, the pig know, and zombie pig. Yeah, I'll stick with the creeper. But yeah, that's my uh, Mount Rushmore. I'm telling you, you really missed out on getting a goof on me in that development scene where you could have said that Celeste is still in development, and that's why I can't get my fucking oh, game. Oh shit! What a good one. All right, I'll I'll stick with that as well. It's still runner up though. Damn it! Thought I'd push it over the edge. <laughs> I like the complete, like, diametrically opposing ideas between me and you. You went so far in depth into this, and then there's going to be me. I just chose games. I feel that... like that's a good uh, representation for our podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. <laughs> Luckily, we're both, like, opposite sides of the coin, so you get a little bit of both. Uh, mine mm -hmm. are just games that meant a lot to me as a person and my love for indie games. So it's not going to be a good. surprise. All of these video games you've heard me talk about at length. It's totally fine. I've even talked about most of them on this freaking podcast. So I'm sure. Boom. So I'm sure it's like Hollow Knight. It's like... Uh... What's the other one you're always talking about? Are you about? gonna guess the, half uh, of them right now? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what's that one roguelite that I never cared much for because it seemed clunky? But uh, God, I can't remember it. But you seem to like it. Damn, it's it's slipping me. Yeah, I'm having real issues getting um, understanding which one you're talking about. <laughs> it's the one. Oh man, I can't remember. Uh, it's fine. It'll come. It'll come to me while you're <laughs> rattling off. But I'm sure Hollow Knight is one of them. Oh, it absolutely is. Yes, mine is. I've got Shovel Knight because I'm an intelligent person who knows that Shovel Knight needs to be included on their freaking Mount Rushmore over eh, Cuphead. A bit. <laughs> a bit. I, well, no, no, Cuphead. Come on now. Come on now. So Don't I've got silly. Shovel Knight. Hyperlight Drifter. I'm honestly oh, surprised you didn't how guess that have, one. How could I have missed? Yeah, I don't know why. Because I was so stuck on that one game that I can't think of now. I honestly can't oh, think Chasm. of it either. Chasm. Chasm is not even a roguelike. It's it's, it's yeah. a Metroidvania. It yeah, but it has procedurally generated stuff. Oh, that's why I, like I associate it with procedurally that. generated, procedurally like uh, assembled stages. That's it. There's nothing more to it. It's still good, though. You guys should check it out. It's pretty fantastic. <laughs> um, so I've got Shovel Knight, Hyperlight Drifter, of course, Hollow Knight. Naturally, it had to come up. And then one I feel like I don't talk about enough, but I really, really love it. And it is my header on Twitter, and that is Bastion. Bastion got me mm -hmm. into video games. Where Hyper... Not into video games. Into indie games. Where Hyperlight Drifter initially did not catch me and really get me into indie games, I immediately went to playing Bastion on my Vita, which I then decided was fucking annoying, and I switched to... Luckily, it had cross-buy, so I switched to playing it on my PlayStation 4 and absolutely adore Bastion. I love that game so much, and I had to include it here... So these are all games that mean a lot to me just as an independent, like a lover of indie games. They're games that kind of like form my tastes of indie games. I love pixel art, which is included in the majority of these games. Well, actually just half of them because yeah, yeah uh, Hollow Knight is not pixel art. It's hand drawn and Bastion mm -hmm. is also kind of like this. It's like 3D. It's weird. Yeah. It's like 3D hand drawn stuff. I'm fairly certain. It's a little weird. I don't... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but, that that one's a little odd. It. But for me, it's got to be Shovel Knight, of course, because it's fantastic. Love that pixel art. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter, because I'm just infatuated with that world. So excited for the TV series. Uh, we got Hollow Knight, 
I fucking love Hollow Knight so much. I'm probably never going to beat it, but damn, I love that game. It's so cool. <laughs> Can't wait for Silk Song and the possibility of never actually beating that one either. And uh, Bastion, because it's the indie game that got me into indie games. So now let's hop on to our next question and our last question for today. This is, comes from Jason from Parallax, and it is, if you have uh, had the team and budget, what would be uh, what would your ideal indie game be? So, Big Josh Boy, yours absolutely has cards in it. You definitely lied before. <laughs> it definitely does not. No, I actually, it, it doesn't. So, um, uh, real quick before, uh, also quick shout out. I definitely wish I could have put Spelunky in there too, but it just didn't fit um, because that is an amazing game and really goes with the birth of games, like the same concept of what you were saying of like getting me into indie games. That was my game. Um, but going back to the actual question, if I had the team and budget, um i'd probably pick the behemoth i'd probably make them create a castle crashers 2 but i would have like that same kind of combat that same kind of art style but instead i would mix it with more of the roguelike style of risk of rain where you're going through getting random abilities and upgrading your characters and changing them based on what you pick up and having multiple characters that do different things rather than just like having a different palette swap. Um, I think that would be amazing. I definitely love the behemoth and I definitely want another castle crashers, but adding those type of elements would be, I'm not sure how it would pan out. And I think there would definitely need to be a lot of like beta testing to it to get down the right feel for it, not to be like (laughs) really wonky, but man, if it got done the right way, I think it would be A+. Ah, all right. I didn't actually expect you, uh, once again, went really in-depth, chose the team as well. Because I did not actually choose the team uh, until you said that. And I was like, you know what? I should probably choose a team. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought that's what the question was asking. Like, if you could steal someone and pour money into them. Because, I mean, if I could just have... A random big group of developers who are just nameless but are good at their job and have a bunch of money like i don't know what i would do because that's a great question because then i would just you know if i had that answer i'd create my own game and <laughs> and try to actually do something that's true that's basically what i wanted to do was uh i would pretty much if i had to choose a team i would probably for for the first game that i want to talk about the the indie game would be a metabots like game because all the metabots games are not very good and i really want a great metabots game and i would more than likely choose uh an independent developer that has already had experience with like monster tamers before so i will absolutely just defer to errol's discretion <laughs> like errol will definitely know more than likely the team behind like uh noromon or monster sanctuary something like that um they could probably make a fantastic metabots game that's where robots would come in by the way told you i was going to talk about it fucking love metabots robots metaphors meta power you know all that all that good stuff all that fantastic uh theme song and the other game idea that i i my ideal game my ideal indie game or just game in general is and this is because of my love of isekai anime i want an amazing mmo that is hardcore and in-depth no mmo has done it for me yet and it's so annoying and it's something i've been looking for for years i want something like the world of like elder tales in log horizon or the world of yggdrasil in overlord just something really in-depth um and i don't know specifically what team could do it i was actually thinking about possibly uh saying the team like from that has developed cross code actually just making an mmo of cross code because that's the actual storyline of cross code I mean, is yeah, an mmo cool. yeah i think that would be really cool just if, if i had to choose a developer and a game for them to make it just literally that team making their game not not the game that they made making the game that their game is in like takes place in (laughs) yeah (laughs) which is a weird way to say that but i think that would be so amazing i'm just constantly looking for some sort of mmo for me to really sink my teeth in i'm soon gonna try to play like black desert online because i really want to see if that 
I don't know, sates my my thirst for freaking samurais in MMOs because apparently World of Warcraft <laughs> has a glaring like lack of knowledge on samurai. I really mm-hmm. want one. I don't know. Man. Just saying. I've never been into MMOs just because I can't deal with the mechanics. I feel like the mechanics are always just clunky and dumb. Oh, they're absolutely clunky, but their animations generally look pretty good. So I'm in. I mean, I guess. <laughs> By the way, I found out the anime that I was talking about. It's called Gantz. I've never heard of it before. Really? Not even oh. a single time. How did you? Oh, wow. Okay, I'm gonna say something right now that's kind of weird. You and my fiance are both. Some of the worst describers of anime ever. So you have that. And then Gantz O? Is that it? Gantz O? Gantz. No, not O. Just Gantz. G-A-N-T-Z. It's literally like, like... it's. I described the first episode. Basically, this teenager like tries to save this guy who falls in like onto the train tracks. And he goes down there to like basically lift him up falls into it and they both get hit by the train and then they're stuck in this weird like afterlife world where instead of like you dying and going to like heaven or hell or any one of those uh type of areas you basically get stuck in this room where there's a bunch of people and they have like these strange battles like (laughs) to see who's gonna live and whoever can survive through it will get the chance of essentially being born again or something like that i don't know it's super weird i believe that this gantz o film actually has something to do with it as well it's like in mm. the same series i'm not 100 percent sure though because i typed in gantz and saw the pictures of the one you're talking about yeah based on gantz so i'm fairly mm. certain that this gantz o has something to do with it yeah so uh, anyway very very odd tangent yeah my my additional weird tangent before we end this podcast that's going quite long but my fiance has been trying to find out what an anime is for like having me guess an anime for years and the only thing she has been able to tell me about it is it's a schoolboy, a girl in a shower and like he might, may or may not walk in on her, and I'm like, that's like literally wow, that's every, like every anime. anime. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this, and then she gives like more, dis- like slightly more descriptive stuff. Like he has pointy hair, and I was like, okay, you're literally oh, just describing also. every anime. That's it. Yeah. Like there's, that's every single fucking anime that exists. I swear to God, it happens in everyone, including like <laughs> wholesome slice of life anime. It happens, uh, but. Just had to end that on a weird tangent. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Indie Incursion and Indie Games Podcast. You guys can follow us outside the show and give us your sweet-ass questions over on uh, our Twitter, at IndiePod. You can also hit me up at Hyde Legion. That's H-Y-D-E-L-E-G-I-O-N. I feel like I should spell that out just to make it a little bit easier for people because my last Maybe. name is not spelled with an I. It's spelled with a Y, so... You know, I also really regret never sure. uh, having people call me Hyde as a kid. I feel like that would have been really cool, like that '70s show. But instead, I was an idiot, and I was like, "My name is Vaughn. Haha, <laughs> don't call me anything else because I'm stupid." Um, well, make the change now. I feel I can't. I've had the same friends for 16 years. It's like well, it's inevitable. Yeah, right. That's why I told my fiance. I was like, "We'll just move away. I'll have people yeah. call me Hyde then. It'll be fine." Exactly. Start your new identity. It'll be <laughs> perfect. You can follow the biggest of average Josh boys at uh, the underscore George 90. Please feel free to tweet at him that he needs to change his name to the biggest (laughs) of average Josh boys or just something in that vicinity. The biggest Josh boy uh, also is is something that he could change it to you know just just something like that make sure to check out all of the other awesome podcasts included in the hp video game podcast network and make sure to check out all of our awesome written content over on parallax media thank you guys so much for listening and i, I guess we'll see you guys next week or you'll listen to us next week <laughs> bye guys <laughs> <laughs> <So dumb. laughs>